sort of time, 15 minutes, we just talk about the golf club. And not about Labour and Conservatives. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, my left hand point, my left hand point. You're going to hear it now. There's a, it, it is a case that the council has lost a lot of money. We've not got a lot of revenue coming in, and we've got to make this revenue up from somewhere. Okay, so let's just take the emotive bit out of the green for a second. I look at the business proposition. I'm not I'm gonna vote against it. I vote with the Tories and I was against it, okay? But the way I'm looking at it is from a business point of view. And the leader in his opening comment said, look at the evidence, look at the evidence, look at the evidence. Look at the evidence. Well, where is the evidence that this Jack Nicholas Venture Group practically completed everything they've started? They've not built the hotel and the last one they did, they went bust, leaving yes. local companies. Lots of money to, to fund, so that's not good. And you've got thousands of houses. There you go. So, <laughs> thank you. They also, um, there was also the evidence of where there was a statement made by the, by the, the leader of the council not long ago that, that they'd actually injected half a million pounds into this project. And why can't for life me find out where and who just put that half a million in? So perhaps you can send me the details of that because I can't find it in their records, our records, or any records that is actually been paid in. So, could you send that to me if you can? You can also get the information if you increase the scrutiny. That's a question. Just to my last point, just, my, just, just to get to the last point, I don't scrutiny committee. We, I think it was Chris Blakely who said there's 56 councils here. I would really like, as a point of order, Mr Mayor, that the press stop saying that can, will councils have agreed to this? Because half the time, we don't agree to these things, it's done by the council. We don't get a say, we don't get a vote. So, don't put in the press, the will councils have agreed to this, because we haven't. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I think it's a surprise that we've got a special council meeting tonight to make a decision on an issue where we haven't got all the facts in front of us. The Conservative motion actually uses the word uncertainty. Well, if there's uncertainty about an issue, why can't you get all the facts so you can be certain before you make an informed decision? And the Lib Dem motion talks about, and I'll quote, without prejudging these issues, but then their own motion goes on to do exactly that. It does prejudge them. Because the Lib Dems, if they had their way, would be going down exactly the same road as the Tory motion and we'd end it all now. But the Labour Group motion points out the potential, and I'd say potential, financial and economic benefits of the proposed scheme. Because if the Council has got the opportunity, which we have, we've got the opportunity to create jobs, set up apprenticeships, Generate financial benefits, revitalise the area, and if we've got the opportunity to do that, Mr Mayor, then I think it would be totally irresponsible to close the door at this stage on any further discussions. Now, I've obviously noticed, like everybody else, there's a great deal of opposition to this. Some of the points that have been put up in opposition may or may not prove to have some validity, but at the moment, we don't know for certainty. And I'm not a financial expert, but my understanding of the financial <laughs> side is that we're talking about capital, not revenue, when it comes to the issues in front of us tonight. I've also noted the support for the scheme from many businesses. Now, I understand that a number of businesses put out uh, a statement today saying they were in support of it. How many of us in the council chamber have read it? Don't we owe it to those businesses to say, OK, you've got a point of view, let's have a look at your point Coffee of view. Coffee shops. Let's have Don't you know it to the public to listen to them? Close the door. Have a latte. Now, the reason I'll be voting for motion number three tonight, Mr Mayor, is that it clearly states, and I think it is important, council believes it would be inappropriate to make a decision on this scheme before we have the full facts. How can anybody vote against that the facts are there, the just just the there. Ten, ten more cappuccinos should carefully consider all the details of the feasibility studies including the economic and the environmental impacts of the proposed scheme under planning regulations i believe our own planning committee would have a role in this process oh, yeah. i also believe that residents should be consulted on all the relevant details as part of that planning process 
instead of this council throwing the whole thing out, again, as the leader has confirmed, scrutiny will take place, so everybody will have the opportunity to ask every single question that they want, want to do. Isn't that what scrutiny is all about as part of the democratic process? So on that basis, Mr Mayor, I will be voting against motions one and two, and in favour of motion number three, and I won't be voting in favour of number three because I want to protect my own personal position within the Labour group. I'll be voting in favour of number three because I believe it's the only way forward tonight. Let's not make a decision so not based two. on speculation. On that basis, Mr Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's, it's my birthday today. Happy birthday! Thank you, Brian. Uh, it is my birthday. Got any balloons? And um, I had a decision to make because Sharon said to me we can go to Paris and have a very, very pleasant uh, few days in Paris. Or you can come here and pay some respect. There was no competition. Where are the many white coats when you need them? I'm, I'm here, thank you. I'm here because there is nothing that has come up in my term as a councillor that I am more passionate about than this particular subject. I have here, courtesy of people who possibly don't share my political view of the world, because this is not about politics. No, no, this is genuinely one of the most unpolitical things yeah. that yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. Yes. I have here why visitors come to Wirral. 91%, 91% of people who visited the Wirral came for the coast and the countryside. Now one has to suggest that there are lots of surveys out there, but surprise, surprise Mr Mayor, this one's by Wirral Council. <laughs> I actually take a slightly different view from possibly some of the things that have been said, and I listen to what Brian said, and I, you always look about inward investments and think that, that's got to be good for the world. But the longer I think about it, the more that I realise, actually, I just don't want you to build on Greenbelt. Yeah. <laughs> it is as simple as that. I actually came to that epiphany some time ago. I accept the premise that people say about jobs and economy. We hear it all the time from people across the way. But I also have first-hand knowledge of brownfield sites that are available on the Wirral where, de where developers... I do want to hear the conclusion of this argument. Thank you, Mr. There are brain, brain dead people, but there are also brownfield sites that are available on the will where developers have actually made it known that they are waiting for the council to open up the more lucrative green dust developments. Yeah. One wonders why that would be. Well, clearly, without a shadow of a doubt, it is because it is about council tax new house development dividends, all of the things that we've talked about before. But whichever way you talk about it, and I have my yellow jacket ready, as I'm sure the people up here do, I will never, ever, whether I am in power, in politics, or just a general member of the public, allow you to destroy the Widdles Green Belt. Absolutely. It is not going to happen. I will protest. I'll be there when the diggers come rolling in. I will never allow you to do that because this country, this beautiful country and the beautiful place that we live in within this beautiful country is never going to be destroyed. The moment it happens, the moment it happens is the moment we lose the will. And as I will reiterate, 91% of visitors came for the coast and the countryside. That is all you need to know. And I, as a councillor, a Conservative councillor representing Greasby, Frankby and Airby, I am begging you on that side of the House to vote with us against development of the Green Belt. Please, please, I cannot beg you enough to do so. And I know there's plenty of people on that side who've got a conscience. And Tony Norbury, 
clearly came to the wrong meeting because we were talking about green belts. But thanks, Tony. Mr. Mayor. You're well over time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Still promoting a scheme 
that will devastate our own biodiversity in a key location for wildlife. Apart from the destruction caused by new roads and buildings, golf courses require on average seven times, seven times the amount of chemicals as farmland. Take air quality, Mr. Mayor. We know that we're a fail to meet World Health Organization safe limits. Some of our residents are literally choking to death on the air that they breathe. That's well, because we're the the health impaired. Yet here we have plans to spend £17 million pounds of public money to build a new road which we know will increase traffic and further damage our air quality. And as for climate breakdown, Mr. Mayor, it's almost as if a scheme based on the wealthy flying in to play around with golf with a flying home again has been deliberately designed to wind up the surging ranks of climate campaigners. So when striking school children tell us they feel let down, it's exactly this kind of outdated 20th century thinking they are referring to. And today is the day we first, the first time ever this country has seen winter temperatures in excess of 20 degrees. For the first time ever. I mean, how many warnings do you need? What does the cabinet think when they hear all the scientists telling us we've got 12 years to address climate breakdown? What do you think? We need a golf resort on green belt. Seriously. Is that what you really need? Really okay, Mr. Mayor, on more than one occasion, I heard a former cabinet member for the environment refer to the Hoyling Executive Housing Scheme in the green belt as my kind of socialism. But now we learn that Celtic Manor do not recognise trade unions, use zero hours contracts, and do not recognise the living wage. Mr. Mayor, if the cabinet thinks this is an acceptable form of socialism, then it is no surprise they have failed to carry their own party members with them. Surely, Mr. Mayor, nobody who calls themselves a socialist could vote for this elitist scheme. Thank you. Um, first, may I congratulate um, the Councillor Burgess Joyce on his birthday. And I, and I, I'm so sorry that he wasn't able to go to Paris with uh, Sharon, but I hope she's having a wonderful time. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, so, uh, uh, somebody once said history repeats itself first at tragedy, next at farce. Well, that takes me back to the enormous opposition we had from that side, a tiny bit, bit before my time when exactly the same sort of issues will be discussed about the huge developments in New Brighton. And what was happening then? It's green to field, don't touch it. It's bringing outside agencies in, don't touch it. It's bringing new kinds of different sorts of industries and shops and all those horrible things we don't want. Well, we wouldn't want to go back to like it was before, would we? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes, yes, why not? A little bit of history. Well, you might, but some of us I would. are progressive. Seaside town, not a shopping complex, small shops, not corporations. I know they hate to hear it, but I have a rather greater history with um, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Celtic Manor than other people. My first visit there was in 1955. In those days, it was great. Was attached was great. to a small dairy farm. I wished to camp there as children. My next visit was in 1963, when my first nephew was born in the old dilapidated maternity hospital which used to be the original manor house. And my last visit there was only a couple of years ago. By then, it had become a world-class conference centre and I moved in there, uh, not out of my own money, I can assure you, I was there at a conference event, uh, immediately after the next of a world-class conference centre, or was once a bit of struggle out. Now, some of you think that, well, it's going to be terrible here, it won't be like that. I can assure you that the new development that took place there was one in which in the 35 or so years ago, nobody was campaigning against it more strongly or loudly than I was. Because at that time, I was a part of the, um, the uh, Labour Human Party race? in Newport. And I was campaigning against it using the same mantras and the same shibboleths and the same fanciful, mistaken arguments that are being used today. But if each one of the political groups in this chamber tonight were to go back to Newport now and ask their political groups in Newport whether Newport would now want to get rid of the Celtic manner, I can assure you, you would have the answer that you don't want 
because they were right then and you're wrong now. And what about the people of Newport? What do they yeah. say? Yeah, what about the residents? Did you ask them? Yes. <laughs> what about the motorway links at Newport? Oh, please. Yes, they elected me. I was a councillor. Yeah, when well, you've got a motorway link, they yeah. have yeah. to have you removed. Yeah. It's yeah. called infill. It's called infill. If tonight is indeed a pantomime, I wonder who's playing the horse that the mind who's at the back of the chief's foot. And I think possibly what we are going to see is a Trojan horse, not a pantomime horse. Yeah. Um, I think for Hoyland Council, this has been a difficult decision uh, tonight with our motion before Lauren Howard. We will be supporting our own motion. And that's because we are viewing it on a worldwide basis. Hoyland will undoubtedly benefit from this scheme should it go ahead. Unlike any other ward in Wirral, it will receive that amount of money going in. We will get a new road, we will surely get jobs, we will surely get benefit from that scale of investment. However, that is not the right thing for us to do because we are Wirral councillors. As Wirral councillors, we will not back this development in Hoyland. I take exception to Councillor Doughty's claims that Brownfield uh, cannot be developed on. Yes, it has issues, it needs to be remediated. The reason why it struggles to be remediated is the land values aren't there. The land values aren't there because this council has not converted head first. It's not with the waters first, and it's not got the land values to a stage where developers can go there, make a profit, and develop. And imagine also if the resource, energy, the focus that has gone to this project had gone to rural waters and had gone to other projects yeah. that would benefit the people of rural. We don't own rural waters, but it's a regeneration project. A regeneration project. Regeneration project. A regeneration project. Regeneration projects need civic involvement. And you know that as well as I do, Paul. You don't own the land, but it's our duty to make sure that it can be developed. We have no limited uh, affordable housing. All these things can be attributed to this focus on this golf course and not where it is needed. And where, if we get the investment where it is needed, it will benefit the people of those areas and the people of Birkenhead and the people who aren't actually our voters. We're voting for this, and you're probably in this scheme, there's probably 300 extra votes for us in Holiday Compounds. And we're saying to you, no, we don't want it. That is the limit. That is the extent, rather, of our credibility on this and our genuineness on this. And finally, I'd like to sum up and I'd like to say that can you imagine if it was different? Can you imagine if it hadn't been this Labour group that had been in charge and we had been in charge? Because it would be very different. Birkenhead would be so much better off than the Conservative with a Conservative led administration. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to be voting against motion three tonight, Mr. Mayor. And I'll be doing that as part of the new independent group that we've got here in the council. Um, it's with a sad heart that I, I, I sit here tonight, Mr. Mayor. Politics. And you've said that before. <laughs> Why don't you, you don't want to yourself up, yeah, you why don't you put yourself up for election? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. come down here without shouting and mouthing off from the public gallery. You're a disgrace. You're the disgrace. Hey, Mr. Mayor, that's our time. That's our time. Sorry, I have to ask you to address the chair. Point of order. What I was about to say, Mr. Mayor, there's been a lot said tonight but very little of any sense whatsoever. Um, it isn't a pantomime here tonight. It's a very serious issue. And the reason I'll be voting against motion three is because of the people of the Wirral, as far as I'm concerned, 100% are against this golf resort. It's been put forward as a golf resort when it was erroneous, I think, to do that. And the, the points that, that um, Pat Cleary made, the points that Paul Dougherty made, and to a limited extent the points that Joe Baird made, I most certainly identify with. 
and we do need houses on the Whittle. We need houses in Whittle West, and we do. Where I live was Greenbelt just over 30 years ago. The library in Pensby was Greenbelt just on 40 years ago. The school that my children went to, and now my grandchildren went to in Whittle West, was Greenbelt, Mr. Mayor. So there's a lot of, of hypocrisy to this debate tonight, but it is a serious debate and I'm glad it was called. It was needed to be called. The Labour group should have taken charge of this narrative from the off. We should have been given, and the people of Will, when a group who are in power, and we've got it in national government, God bless us, we've got it, haven't we? Democracy has failed in this country at the moment. Um, but to finish on a serious note, it's a flawed project in my opinion, for a lot of the reasons that have been given, and it's with a sad heart that I vote against Motion 3 tonight, but I'm listening to the people of the will, and I was told, Steve, by you when I first got elected, give it the bus test, you know if you go to dinner with somebody, go up on a bus, Steve, tomorrow go up on a bus and tell that bus, and pick a packed one, Tell the bus what the, what the positives are to the golf resort. Tell them what the positives are, then ask them on that bus what they think. And I'll tell you now, 100%, because I've done it in my ward. Unlike some of my, one of the ward members there, I think she still finds it difficult to find out where the ward is. She <laughs> still uses the sand to get there. <laughs> 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 It saddens me, Mr. Mayor. It brings politics into disrepute. And some of the things that have been said here tonight by people over there bring politics into disrepute. And it saddens me, Mr. Mayor. It does. And thanks for allowing me the opportunity to say so. And welcome to this new group. And I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Mayor. This group is going to get larger. It certainly is. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to support the motion that the plans for the Hoy Lake Golf Resort are. <coughs> Whilst Hoy Lake is not geographically next to my ward, Catterbridge, the implications of this project going ahead will have a major effect on Catterbridge Ward and the precious green belt that we are desperate to preserve, and more particularly Brackenwood Golf Course, yes. which seems to be being lined up as, a prime, as prime building land. Build on one golf course, and that sets the precedent to build on another. Yeah. The Hoylake project can only be viable if the lucrative 160 proposed houses are built on the green belt. Without, this house, without these houses, it becomes another struggling golf course like the two the council has already disposed of. Once this decision has been agreed, it opens the floodgates for building anywhere on the world and our valuable green belt spaces. Once the green belt is built up, as has already been said, it's gone forever. Does this council want to be the one that squandered and gave away our grandchildren's heritage? I would ask the members opposite, is that what you want for your grandchildren? The leader of the council is retiring in May. Phil? <laughs> Phil, you will be under no illusion as to the vast majority of residents in Wirral do not want this golf course, and by implication they do not want any building of any description on any part of the Greenbelt. Yeah. You, like every other councillor, has received hundreds of emails opposing this reckless plan. Can I appeal to you to leave your legacy by making the decision to scrap this project? The public of Wirral would then be eternally grateful. Continue to push this through, then you will continue to be vilified. You have young grandchildren. Think about the world that you want to leave them to live in. Please think very carefully what the wide ranging implications of this project are and cancel it before any more taxpayers' money is squandered on it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just want to 
make two points, I think, having listened to what people have said. The, the first point, uh, which uh, people have not turned to since the was first raised, possibly by Cross uh, Cobb, is the issue of the land use, uh, how the discussion about the land use uh, co uh, coincides with uh, consultation uh, about land use uh, via the local plan. Now, the executive have put before the people of Will uh, parcels of land, some of which are in the green belt, that they have deemed potentially suitable for, for release for housing. And they've done that based on a set of criteria. And we will see how the consultation for that pans out, and we will see what final decisions are made on that. That's not the issue that I want to drift into, as others have. The issue is that none of the land in the golf resort footprint is in or part of that consultation. Now, I can only assume from that that those parcels of land within the golf uh, resort uh, footprint have not met the criteria hey, for hey. release in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Now, the reason for that, again, was touched on, I think, by Councillor Gilk, that there was some dispute about whether it was good, bad, or indifferent farm use land. Now, the, the maps have actually indicate that it is good, versatile farm <coughs> land. And we do, I think, not just here, but in the other swathes of, uh, of Green Belt that are under consultation, need to have an eye on food production in this country. Yeah. 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 House upon house upon house, and not be able to feed them. That's the, that, that's the, the simple fact, as so far as it goes. The second point, uh, I think it's just been made. So again, I don't want to drift too, too much into other parcels of green about that. But it says something when the council is prepared to give up a golf course, black and wood, for housing, uh, because of a lack of interest in golf on the streets, and then continues to support a golf development in the other parts of the board. It's just, it's just mixed messages. Yeah. And finally, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, the third point I'd quite like to make, it turns to the uh, points we made a couple of times at the, at, the, uh, at the open about the, um, <coughs> uh, the, the tension, if you will, between the executive and the assembly, one that is being played out nationally, uh, the tension between the executive and the cabinet nationally and the parliament and House of Commons uh, on other matters. Ultimately, it might not, to some, some people's eyes, matter how the assembly votes. The executive will continue to make its it will <coughs> But ultimately, the executive will have to bear into the assembly as well. This will happen. This will happen nationally, no doubt. The assembly will take those powers from the executive. And the same will happen here. Having listened to what's been said by those uh, who we may have assumed may have rebelled <coughs> against the uh, Labour group tonight, members of the, in the public gallery and elsewhere in the building will possibly go away disappointed at the results of the vote. But I say this to them, they can take heart because this offer from the executive to set up a scrutiny day wouldn't have been on the table had it not been for this week. Had it not been for this week, yeah, yeah, yeah. Been been this offer wouldn't have been on the table if it wasn't for the fact, and this is the fact, the executive is only able to get its way here in the assembly tonight by threats of expulsion. Yes. 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 Whether Councillor Norby becomes the leader uh, after May in the absence of, uh, of the estate, or whether it is a member seeking election yeah. elsewhere, and whether that member is successful or not against uh, the independent uh, uh, group remains to be seen. But threats of expulsion, threats to your adventures, can never stand, uh, stand uh, scrutiny in the long term. So up. members Time's of the public up. may go away disappointed tonight. But it's on a slippery slope to, to, to being kicked out. Phil's legacy, it's not going to last much past May. Whoever is sitting in that go to Balakar.
photos of the people in the gallery tonight. I hope it wasn't, um, but it certainly seems to me like, yes, another attempt for you to raise your profile in order for you to get the nomination for the Burton Head Parliamentary seat, and I hope that wasn't the case. Councillor Adrian Jones um, mentioned as well that, um, that, that people on this side of the chamber were against the new Brighton development. We weren't against it per se. All we were asking at the time was, as many residents were, that there was an adequate traffic impact assessment done. That never happened. And in fact, if you go down to New Brighton uh, on a very busy day, it's been made slightly easier at the moment um, with the uh, roundabout on Harrison Drive, but the only way into the resort is via either Bayswater Road or Sea by the Road, yeah. and that would have benefited from an adequate um, traffic impact study. And all we seem to have now is camper vans coming in, which clearly, I'm glad to say, are not in my ward anymore, but they've gone out onto Councillor uh, Jones's ward, and I'm sure he's as unhappy with them as I was. But um, can I also pay tri tribute to one of the other speeches from um, that side of the gallery from uh, Councillor Chris Meaden. I was privileged to be in the council chamber here with Chris when she made her maiden speech because we both came on to the council um, of the class of 91 together with you, Phil. Um, and I'm sure you are deeply saddened that uh, Chris has had to make the decision that she's made tonight. But well done, Chris. And when I see and hear some of the comments that have been made uh, here tonight by some of your former colleagues, I can quite see why you left the Labour group. And I can only say that you were much respected, not only just here, but clearly as a colleague on the Fire Authority. So, that, so thank you for that. But Mr Mayor... Um, One minute. Yeah, sorry, Mr Mayor. What, what I am surprised at tonight is that um, at a time when local golf clubs and a number of, um, clearly in my ward as well, are finding it difficult to attract new members um, to, their, to their numbers, that you, the, the Labour Party opposite clearly want to impose yet another golf resort, a golf club here on where It makes absolutely no sense. There is a large group of people here tonight from Rapperwood Golf Course yes. who are absolutely <coughs> passionate that that golf course stays in existence. Perhaps the leader of the council may be able to indicate to them tonight a little bit about what he has indefinite plans for them. But as always, Mr Mayor, it's typical of this Labour group. What they want to do is impose their will on people. <coughs> they want to impose another golf course on people, a golf course that nobody wants, nobody likes, <coughs> and certainly the world doesn't need. They have done similar things where they've tried to impose a PSPO order on people in Wirral. They have also <coughs> done the same in charging for public toilets to name what it is. Plus a few. And Mr. Mayor, most of these are being kicked into the long grass till after the elections, as is a decision on this golf resort, because Labour clearly realise that what they're doing is not favourable with the local public. Mr. Mayor, so what <coughs> excuse me, so what do the Labour councillors in the Cabinet do? They say, well let's redevelop Birkenhead once again. And I don't have any objection to that, but what I do have objection to is the fact that a so-called cash-strapped council yeah. thinks it's a good idea to buy a cinema, a cinema yeah. and to it's buy a video yeah. in yeah. Birkenhead yeah. yeah. so that they can jump into bed with property developers. As soon as Willowborough Council's yeah. name yeah. is yeah. mentioned, property developers must be absolutely rubbing their hands together. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I've obviously run out of time. I'm sorry about that. But the last, the last thing, Mr Mayor, that we're all needs is another golf resort. So Labour clearly must give a commitment here tonight that the Cabinet will revoke any such commitments that they have made with the private sector on this and that the folly which they're trying to inflict on people will be dead in the wood once and for all. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah.
This is the party that has hit the council with a housing target that in planning methodology is incorrect. No the target. council has said it's incorrect. <laughs> the Tories asked for it to be reviewed and they've been ignored. Half the problem is caused by a national planning system that is not fit for purpose. A planning system that allows developers to rip out 160 yards of ancient hedgerow and put a retrospective planning application to cover it. These are the problems. A planning system that fails developers above the environment. That the famous developers above the environment. These are the main issues, and the reform of central government planning law and planning methodology. And this is what half the problems that we've got to deal with here. So it's, uh, never mind the golf resource, it's the rotten planning national system that needs to be reformed. That is the issue as well. Thank you. Councillor the Sykes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It seems that at the moment kicking the can uh, down the road for important political decisions is a common theme and sticking out for people to have all the facts even though the clearest facts were already in front of us. Uh, the, fact that with, the fact that the leader of the council is talking about the facts that need to be uh, reviewed in a scrutiny committee as if they're going to change between now and when that committee arises, that the fact that the Hoylake Golf Resort will be moved out of Greenbelt, and considering it's not in the local plan, with all the other swathes of land he wants to move out of Greenbelt yeah. to open up for developers to build houses across across the likes of uh, the large open spaces in my ward and many other people's wards in this council, like Brackenwood Golf Course, which is under threat, like the other pieces of land to the east of the M53 that are under threat. Um, I don't think that is the case. So the one clear important fact is that this golf resort is to be built on Greenbelt and we cannot support that being built in the location where it is now. Mr Mayor, I'm very lucky that my office is actually smack bang in the middle of this development. One of my offices for my business, I'm, I'm a local business owner in Hoylake, one of the ones that uh, Phil was talking about and I think most of us are actually against it. The article that I read showed that there were four local businesses, one of them being BT. I don't know how BT is a local business. <laughs> they might put local business BT in their name, but I don't think that disguises the fact that they don't care about the world as much as locals who were born and bred here in Maine. Exactly right. Mr Mayor, around the chamber tonight there's been lots of uh, arguments put forward from lots of different groups, and I have to say, apart from the political content we've got towards the end of Joe Bird's uh, speech about the Labour Party, I, I agree with everything she said. I also agree with everything that Pat Cleary was saying about the environment and how I was at the protest last week over in Liverpool when lots of children around the world have started standing up for the environment and, and showing their views that they need to be heard. When you we're building a golf resort, Pat mentioned the chemicals and all the water that goes into, into water in these greens as well. Even if it's not a sustainable development. Mr Mayor, a lot of the people have already talked about the jobs and the houses. But it's clear that they're not affordable houses. And as Paul uh, mentioned about building in West Rural, I mean, I myself haven't I've never uh, spoken against the development for affordable housing. I've spoken against a lot of uh, extensions and people making their houses bigger and putting them out of reach of people, uh, of local uh, people, but never against affordable housing. But unfortunately, what makes a, a house price go up is often the location. In fact, there's a program called Location, Location, Location. And if we put things into the West World, then the house price inevitably goes up. 